we've been joined by a guest in studio. Do you know who she's with? Uh, who, Chen? Yeah. No. World Wait. Economic Forum. Oh, WF strikes again. No wonder. Yeah. No wonder. Yeah. So, part of the Build Back Better situation? Yeah, I mean, this that's what all of this is about. Yeah. All of it is about that. Did I mean, you write it's, a book about that? Or I did write did a book about that. Something to say about it? Yeah. Are you an author? Oh, huh. an author has joined us. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. Huh. 23 times best-selling author. 23 books? It's crazy, <laughs> isn't it? What? 23rd? Oh, this yeah. Is, this is the 23rd book? Uh, might be the 24th. I don't, I don't know. So one of those times. One of those times. You didn't make the best-selling oh. list? Uh, no, the That's first. Well, pathetic. I actually that did. Is a real I, I actually. But the did. New York Times wouldn't admit it. Are they doing that this time? Yeah. Uh, they, yeah. I think I read yeah. something they, they where were, we were number you were one. Number one everywhere except the New York Times. We were number twelve. Mm-hmm. Twelve. Twelve. Well, there's more that goes into it yeah. than actual sa- sales. Oh yeah. Right. When you're talking right. about best. Best selling. Best selling, yeah. <laughs> they said they had their own, you know, calculation. Their own metrics. And their own metrics. And we mm-hmm. know that. Um, mm-hmm. But I've never seen anything like this. We were... That's really amazing. We were 30,000 more than the second best selling book, which they put at number 13 because it was RFK Jr.'s book. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, God. Uh, and wow. we were... Forty-five thousand more sales than the book they had at number one. <laughs> and then what's really crazy is the next week we had no copies to sell, none. Okay, they only we only lost one place. We couldn't sell anything, oh, and yet wow. we were thirteenth on the New York Times list. It was like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? It's so bizarre, crazy. I mean, they are so agenda driven. They are so They're all blind. ideologically They're all driven. All blind. All That's, blind. I, I mean, the paper of record. It's really despicable. But tell us about the book. Um, what what is we what is going on with the Great Reset? Um, that almost sounded sincere, like you don't know. Uh, no, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what I do. Um, That's what it I do. Is, this is this book, Pat is. Uh, I mean, I'm traveling next week because I'm meeting with legislators, Senate and, and uh, House members, and governors next week. Mm. There are now 20 states that are starting to put anti-ESG legislation in because of this book. Mm. Um, mm. It is, once you understand the great An ESG reason, for the uninitiated stands for... Um, uh, it's a social credit score. It yeah, is for um, environment, uh, social. social justice, and governance. So Jeez. it is a system that— And it's in place right now. Oh, yeah. Right? You, so If you have, if you mm-hmm. have a, you know, uh, any kind of 401k where you're investing in an index or anything else, you probably will go to your website, especially if you're J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, and you will find— your ESG score. You have one. And that's mm. critical to understand. So ESG is this system where the banks can't loan you any money if you're a risk to them. So the blaze will be a risk to banks. Mm-hmm. We won't be able to get any loans for anything. Because uh, you have revolve- a really bad ESG score. Correct. Mm -hmm. including revolving credit, which most companies have every single month. It's revolving. You you use it for your payroll. Mm. And then as the next month comes in, you pay that off. And then they give you the the money just because of receipts, you know, collectibles. Mm -hmm. So you uh, uh, you won't be able to get a revolving payroll payroll loan. You won't be able to go buy a, a house. You won't be able to buy a car. You won't be able mm. to get a loan for anything because one of those three categories, you're <laughs> you're risky. You're not green enough. Okay, your house wow. that you yeah. want to buy is not green enough. Um, you don't agree with social justice. You are outspoken. This is for the very first time. They will not use your credit score. 
Wow. They will use your social justice score. They actually will now scan your Facebook page and your social media, <laughs> depending on who you follow. This is the Chinese model. Yep. This is the Chinese model. And it's already in. It's already done. You have to get away mm. from the big banks, put your money into a, um, a local bank, one that has no connections except in your local town, or uh, a, a, um, a credit union, you've got to get out of Vanguard and all of these index things. Go to your HR director. Warning: If you work for a, you know, woke company, Coke, any of Disney, them, Disney, any of them, yeah, uh, iHeart, yeah, all companies. iHeart is iHeart. All companies <laughs> That's not are good. no. All companies. I'm in the middle of a contract negotiation. Wow. I've had this conversation with them. You know, I've had this. I've been in this company since 1989. I know. You have been in and out since that time. Yep. Um, I know them quite well. Uh, and uh, I've said to them, we can call off all contract negotiations. What does this mean to you? And they're like, well, we have certain things we have to do, blah, blah, oh. blah. That Okay. All right. Um, but... You know, it will never wow. affect me on the air. And most people are going to be working for ESG companies. Mm. So you're not going to be able to avoid it. You're just not. But the key here is, is get your money out mm. of that system. They are using your money. Jeez. Vanguard, BlackRock, Black, what is it? Black uh, Stone, uh, Black any Black. of these, any of these um, indexes that you're in, mm. any of them. They're using your money to destroy capitalism. And mm. it's really critical that you pull your money away from them. It's the only way to stop them. The only way to stop it is to get your money out and also to send a message from the states. Again, we have 20 states right now that are saying we're pulling all of our teachers' funds. We're pulling all of our state funds. We're pulling everything out of, out of companies like BlackRock. How do you explain to people that – Successful capitalists like these are okay. trying to destroy capitalism. Okay, try Why? this on. For, try, try, try. I have two explanations for this. That I, I'm not sure what what is the most effective yet because I have a hard time explaining that without getting all into the nuts and <laughs> bolts of it. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so here are the two explanations. One, what are the companies that are losing? Um, Faith, or what are the categories that people just don't trust anymore? Big business, media, mm -hmm. government, banks, right? Yep. Those are the big ones. Mm -hmm. Now, let's, and big tech. So, big tech is the last one to have the, uh, the fork, the uh, pitchforks and torches come. Okay. That pitchfork and torch is coming when AI starts destroying jobs. That will happen by 2030. All of big tech knows this. 40% of all jobs will be gone by 2030, okay? And you mm. won't be able to retrain a lot of people for different jobs. It's going to be a constant churn by 2030. So they know when AI starts taking jobs, they're in trouble. Mm. But they're the last on the food chain. Who knows they're in trouble? Have you noticed CNN, how they are just rallying around this anti-Joe Rogan thing. Yeah. That's because, yep. you know, the, notice the New York Times also declared a war on all podcasters, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's a war against people like us. That's coming from the media. That's because we have millions of listeners. Mm -hmm. Anderson Cooper has about 500,000 now, okay? Mm -hmm. We have millions, 500,000. Joe Rogan is estimated to have anywhere between... million a day. Yeah, 11 million a, a day. day, okay? It's amazing. Again, CNN, highest rated program, 500,000. They're done. They know it. Mm -hmm. Who's going to protect journalism? And the first to be eaten are the politicians, okay? Mm -hmm. The politicians <clears throat> need, need help. The banks need bailouts, the big businesses, they've known since the Tides Foundation in 1988. We've got to take over big business, correct? Yeah. Okay. So here's what's happening. Government, those people are freaking out. 
we're going to lose our power. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need help. So they've gone to big tech first. Well, actually, media first, but media is so ineffective now. So they went to media. Let's partner. Let's private public partner. Okay. Now, big tech, let's public private partner. So we can, we're telling you, you've got to stop this onslaught. They're not, they're, they're in on it together. Mm -hmm. Of course, they need to stop Joe Rogan because Joe Rogan can expose all of this and turn the tides on their plan. Mm -hmm. The businesses are getting rich because the Federal Reserve, which is the bank, remember, the Federal Reserve is only the biggest banks in the country. The biggest banks are in trouble, says the Federal Reserve. So we need to bail them out. So they take money, they print, and instead of putting it in the Fed pocket, they just put it into their bank pocket, okay? Mm -hmm. What are the banks doing with it? How did the stock market go up when everything was closed? How was the stock market yeah. booming? Because the Federal Reserve is getting it to the banks. The banks are taking that money, and they're investing in companies like BlackRock hedge funds. BlackRock is then going to the companies and saying, we have an ESG score. You need to do this or you're you're not going to play the game and be in with us or you're going to be out. Remember what George Soros told me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The ship is about to sail and you are either on it or you're not. All of them are choosing to be on it mm. because they'll get rich. Mm -hmm. All of the, right. the elites, this is... Bringing us back to the days of lords and ladies and serfs. Mm, I just I looked up um, mm. the company that I have a lot of banking with, and uh, ta-da! On their website is their environmental, social. You'll have it every government. So that's my question: Is there somewhere they don't hide it? I mean, it, it's not even hidden. But is there a list no. um, somewhere of like all the companies, or is it just safe to assume? No, that assume all... it, you just assume <laughs> yeah. it's all there mm -hmm. because they all know, and this has been put in mm -hmm. for a long time. This is the reason the Paris Accords happened. Remember how they all freaked out about the stupid Paris Accords? Mm -hmm. And we were like, what the hell is this Paris Accord? Because the Paris Accords were not about global warming. The five days in Paris before were the biggest banks in the world where they all signed a treaty to do this. Jeez. Global warming is... was, the, was the vehicle to uh -huh. bring it in, but COVID actually helped them go turbo. So the question is, now they are becoming desperate. Um, That's why they had to get uh, Trump out. Right. Exactly right. That's why, do you notice all of the businesses that came out and they were proud to say, well, yeah, we had a phone call. We had to make sure that uh, Trump was out and we did everything we could. Remember that? Mm -hmm. They were proud of it. Mm -hmm. That's ESG. They knew that <laughs> Trump was America first. You cannot be America first in this. You can't. Trump was literally the finger in the dike mm. for so much. And obviously Trump, I'm not sure, understands what he exposed. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't, don't think so. I don't think so either. And I don't think he understands. I think he knows there's shenanigans going on. Oh, no, he knows he there knows is. that. He He's, doesn't know the specifics. You know, I had dinner with him a few, what, a month ago or something. Yeah. And, uh, it was fascinating. There were two things that I learned from him. One, he may not know what it is, but he knows how big it is. Mm. You know, yeah. he said, I knew I was going to have to fight, but I didn't know I'd have to fight for my life every day and do it alone. I, I okay? recall. Jeez. Yeah. And he was, he was very clear on that. It was not a Trumpian, like, you know, it's the greatest. I was fighting by. It was sincere. Yeah. The second thing is that you have to know about Donald Trump. And I was shocked by this, honestly. And I believe it was sincere. He's a different man in person, one on one. Hmm. And um, we were talking, and he was sitting there at dinner, and he just shook his head and he said, Look at this. Look at what the hell is happening to our country so fast. And he he kind of got a little reflective and he said, and I fixed it. You know, he's kind of like looking at me <laughs> yeah. like, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. He said, and I fixed yeah. it. We were on the right track. We were moving we definitely forward. Were. Yes. Yeah, he did put us back on yeah. track. And he said, um, he said, you know, I never thought, I knew I was going to have to fight, but I never thought I'd have to fight 
uh, for my life every day alone. Mm -hmm. Then he said, no, not alone. All of those Americans that voted for me, and this was really sincere, all of those Americans that voted for me, they didn't know they were going to have to put up with what they had to put up with right. either. That's for sure. And I promised them that I would fix it. Now, how do I walk away from them? Mm. How do I not go back in and try to fix this and finish the job for the people that trusted me to fix it? That and I didn't. Chills. That, that's yeah. So fantastic. That is my impression of Donald Trump. It is. He I is such a patriotic he is. America and guy. Loyal. Lo yep. Loyal. He the thing I I really got from him, because I I went in, you know, thinking Donald Trump absolutely gonna run again because he's not going to leave, you know. Uh, with a <clears throat> with a with a feeling that he lost that he lost yeah okay? his legacy his legacy but that's not, not it that's not it and that's what everybody misses about mm. Donald Trump that's yeah, you know, really great it's something that has haunted me and it's now coming back to the surface now listening <clears throat> to you talk about Trump uh, remember I think it was summer of 2020 and he was on with Rush Limbaugh and he just talked and talked and talked Rush blew out national commercial breaks just to keep the conversation going. And I recall something that Donald Trump said during that interview mm -hmm. where he said, you know, if I'm not reelected, and he didn't say it exactly like this, but he said, <clears throat> Rush, there is so much, there is so much corruption that we are this close to exposing. And if I'm not reelected, they will get away with this forever. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's true. And that's what I it think Ron like. DeSantis, I think if Donald Trump, you know what I'd really like to see, because I said to him, you can't do all this in four years. Right. I said, so... If you mm. brought in somebody like DeSantis and he As was vice your vice president, president mm -hmm. you might be able to have 12 years. Yeah. And it's going to take 12 years um, if everybody understands what they're fighting. This thing is to the core rotten. What I am, did he say about that? Uh, he said, um, uh, I said, okay, all I said to him was, I don't think you can do this in four years. Yeah. And he said, we have to do it, but I cannot do it with a GOP that is full of a bunch of Mitch McConnell's. Yeah, that's for sure. He said it. <sighs> that's it, for he sure. said, we cannot do it because yeah. and I said to him, you are you making a list of naughty and nice of the people that have <laughs> you to, know he is. Yeah. That have to be fired right now. I said, you yeah. have to almost shut down every federal agency. And he said, I can't do it without Congress and the Senate. I can't do it. It will take an act of Congress to fire these people. And he said, it has to all be cleaned out. And we talked about, I'm not for the Great Reset, but I am for, have you tried unplugging it and plugging it back in? <laughs> and that's really what it, we have to do. It, it's, we must unplug this system and then plug it back in and restore it to factory settings. That's what happens when you mm -hmm. hit the reset button. It doesn't reset to a new system. It goes right. back to the original programming. And that's what needs to happen. And that's not what that's, you know, that's what Joe mm -hmm. Biden ran on. We're going to come we're going to come back and, you know, we're going to return to normalcy. This is M more abnormal oh, yeah. than the guy who was tweeting oh. on the pot at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. This and, is, and it's more abnormal than Barack Obama. So did you see? Oh, <laughs> I mean, this guy's so much worse than Obama. Oh, yeah. I didn't think you could get worse. Uh, can I? Can I have another minute after we break? You can. And then I want to, I want to share with you what Department of Homeland Security mm. said. Did you hear this? I don't. Oh, sure. it was a love missive directly to you and other podcasters. Wow. All right. Uh, All more right. with Glenn coming up in just a minute <laughs> oh, on no. Pat Gray Unleashed. Department of Homeland Security. Now, I want you to remember that they have been talking about misinformation and disinformation, right? Mm -hmm. They've been talking about the purveyors of that. That's all that uh, uh, CNN has been talking about is, we got newsrooms. We got newsrooms all over the country. That's and right. these people just go on and they just spout <laughs> things like we've never read anything. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. um, and the, the president has been saying, you have got to get control. Big social media, you have a responsibility, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, 
Now the Department of Homeland Security. Now this came out uh, Monday or Tuesday. What's going on in the news? Joe Rogan and all of his disinformation, right? Yep. Okay. Summary of the terrorism threat to the U.S. Department, uh, or the, to the U.S. Homeland. This is a National Terrorism Advisory Bulletin that was just released. Remember when they came out after January 6th with a bulletin and said, you know, people who believe the election was stolen are terrorists. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So this, they say, is just a continuation. Is it? Listen verbatim to this. The United States remains in a heightened threat environment fueled by several factors, including an online environment filled with false or misleading narratives and conspiracy theories and other forms of mis-, dis-, and malinformation introduced and or amplified by foreign and domestic threat actors. Mm. These threat actors, i.e. you, Pat... (laughs) seek to exacerbate societal friction to sow discord and undermine public trust in government institutions to encourage unrest. Got it? Mm -hmm. In the first paragraph, it repeats that twice. Then additional details. The primary terrorism-related threat to the United States continue to stem from lone offenders or small cells of individuals motivated by a range of foreign and or domestic grievances often cultivated through the consumption of certain online content. (laughs) Okay. Then key factors uh, for the current heightened threat environment. Number one, the proliferation of false or misleading narratives, which sow discord or undermine public trust in U S government institutions. The, wow. the World Economic Forum just did a 10-day – remember when they when Bill Gates had, uh, what was it, Event 201, mm-hmm. where we're just going to see what we should do in case there's a coronavirus outbreak. And that mm-hmm. involved all of the treasuries, all of the central banks, everybody else, big business, media, and they wargamed it. Well, the World Economic Forum just finished another war game. And the war game was, let's say Russia uh, starts to uh, retaliate because of something. And they decide to hack into our financial systems or they start to uh, hack in and they do what they did last time with the, remember when the gas pipeline and they started to say, you hold it hostage, we're not opening right. it unless you pay. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do we do? What should the world do? Because that could cause a catastrophic collapse of the financial system. And a collapse, to quote them, that would require the world to orderly get out of certain world currencies. Gee, I wonder what world currency that might be. Okay? (laughs) So they wargamed it. They said the number one threat, the number one problem would be those that would say things like, get your money out of the banks, Hmm. get your money out of Wall Street, get your money into Bitcoin, get your money out of U.S. dollars. Those would be the number one threat and would have to be silenced immediately. You tie that With this, you see what's happening to Joe Rogan. You see what the left has said about podcasts. You see what they're doing. Our time is limited, and I don't say that with hyperbole. I say that to say to you, get the Great Reset book. I hate to say, I mean, uh, yes, I'm right now I'm not making, I'm not making any money on it. I'm just trying to pay for all the research and everything else. (laughs) Um, Get the book. It is the Rosetta Stone. We do have it in audio and Kindle, but I'm telling you, buy the paper, the paper copy, because it information will just disappear. Mm-hmm. It will be gone, and our voices will not be in your life. You've got to do your own homework. Pretty chilling. Yeah. It's Pretty sobering. Path. You and I prayed every day, every day on our knees in my office in New York, every mm-hmm. single day. Tell us, Lord, what do we need to say? 
Where do we need right, to go? What right. do we need to look for? We saw all of this. Watch last night's show. Watch last night's TV show okay. and see the chalkboard I put out five, four or five years ago and look at it. it uh, I didn't come up with these things, but the Great Reset is exactly what we knew. And do you cover a section on what we do about all this? Yeah, the last one. Yeah. And okay. one of them is we have to have an Article 5 <clears throat> convention. Uh, have to. Been pushing that for, what, 10 we, years? Yes. But it, we, is Levin still behind that? He's oh, still yeah. pushing for it, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's And there is movement on that, but it is the only way to clean it I've been hearing about it, it again lately for the first time in a while. Yeah. So it's the there's only hope that way. it couldn't, it can happen. Yeah. It, it has That's to. Great. It, because <clears> we are <throat> at the place where you've got to be on your local, not only school board, zoning committee. Hmm. You've got to call the state. Texas is doing something, but they're only doing it on the E, not the S and the G. They're just protecting the oil companies. Same thing that happened mm. with Oklahoma. Same thing that's happening in West Virginia. Mm. Excuse me. Don't just go for the oil companies. How about you protect the rest of us, too? Yeah. Yeah. All right. The book is The Great Reset uh, by Glenn Beck, and it's, it's a must read. Absolute must have, must read. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here.